Uh, on your FAQs for the ramp test, it states that you use 75% of the rider's one minute, uh, one minute peak, one minute power. And he says, okay, so on my last ramp test, my best one minute power was 325 watts. However, if I look through my personal records, I can see that my best one minute power was, is one, is 442. And he's talking about that taken from a ride outside of the ramp test. So having done the calculations, there's a difference from best versus ramp test to almost 90 watts. So the question is, why is that? Thank you and have a terrific day. He also said, P.S. I recently used your tech support. My issue was resolved and I even had follow up to ensure I was happy that everything was all sorted. Best tech support ever. Thank you uh, to our support agents. They we yes. probably don't mention this nearly enough because they don't get the, the limelight probably or that certainly that we do here on the podcast. But they are awesome and you put a huge amount of effort uh, in in that regard. So thanks to all of them. Chad, I got this one. Okay. Yeah, I know I you I do. Understand I see your the, comment. The new, <laughs> Take the it away. Nuances. It's um, Ben. The reason is because it ramps. Bro. <laughs> yeah, don't forget the bro. Read the whole yeah. sentence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it ramps, bro. That's what I wrote down. It ramps because it ramps, bro. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's way harder to have those steps ahead of time than to be totally fresh and go uh, out really hard too. Um, that, and that is the gist of it. That's the short answer. Let me let me do what I do and give you the long answer. <laughs> so. <clears throat> it's, it's not one minute power. It's, it's great. It's a graded exercise test. So one minute power is really only good at measuring one minute power. It doesn't even tell you what your anaerobic capacity is, what your fatigue profile is. It tells you what you can do for a minute and it changes all the time. Whereas when we use a graded exercise test, we're gradually overwhelming a system to the point of not breakdown, but failure, you know, whether that's volitional, you choose to do it, or you just get pushed to a point where your muscles simply won't allow you to go further. In any case, you stop <clears throat> and that, that, that escalation up to that point and that final minute and the way we look at it and process it and apply that 75% reduction allows us to really effectively, as we've found, predict your FTP and give us that anchor for all of your training zone and all of your training to follow. So essentially over the course of a ramp, when we step things up, 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 we're maxing out your aerobic capacity and we're even allowing for a little bit of anaerobic contribution. And then, like I said, we're estimating your FTP off of that. If you do, uh, I mean, you simply can't compare your maximal one minute power when you're fresh to your one minute power at the end of a, a graded exercise test like that, or really anything, just go up a hill and work a little bit harder every couple of minutes and then see what your one minute power looks like at the end of that versus rolling easy for 10 minutes and then going full gas for a minute. They won't compare and basing your training zones on that one minute power. And this could be a pretty fun experiment for you. S see what sort of training zones get prescribed. If you use your full on one minute power <laughs> to anchor your, your training zones, it, it, it'd be brutal. It's also worth rec uh, recognizing that even over the course of, you said 19 days after your ramp test, you could see a decline in one minute power. I mean, that these, these are, uh, energy systems that train relatively quickly and detrain relatively quickly. So that's yeah, another reason why, I mean, just to heap it onto the obvious reasons why we couldn't use one minute power to mm -hmm. anchor, anchor training recommendations. One minute power by itself too, is too much, um, anaerobic contribution. It would go yeah, crazy. Uh, yeah, I would be at least half at that point, roughly 460 watt FTP when I was, this is my last time I did one minute power was racing last year. So, uh, that yeah. would be insane. I could not hold that for any amount of time. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, the, the graded ex exercise test gives us a, a better bearing on your aerobic capacity. And that's really what we're chasing here. We actually want to minimize that anaerobic contribution. And we found that with one minute steps, and I think we come up like two and a half percent each step, it, mm -hmm. whatever it is, we do it in such a way that we do minimize that anaerobic contribution. And lots of testing went into that to figure out what was the best sort of Quite option across, across, not just, it wasn't just Chad, Nate and I doing the, doing the test and no. seeing how it worked for us this across looks good. a large swath of people. It was like, uh, over 10,000, I think. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was a ton. Uh, I forget exactly the number. I might've mentioned the podcast, but it was many, many thousands of, of people looking at the results afterwards. What workouts could they do afterwards, uh, to spread all that sort of stuff. For kicks, I looked at mine and I would be a 396 FTP instead of a 307 FTP. Bro, so, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> oh man, that'd be amazing. <laughs> you would be so good. You'd that be world be awesome. champ for masters. For, yeah, I'd have to be, right? Yeah, at that point. Um, if not, I would have some, I would probably have the aerodynamics of a barn or something. So, um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, w along these lines too, I think that this is a question where a lot of, uh, this kind of explains how ramp tests work in general, specifically how our ramp test works. 
and how we arrive at that. And one important thing to remember with testing is that it's really tempting to just try to look at like race data from your best performance that you had, right? Like in the sense that it's like really like you had a great day and you did this race and it was a criterium. So you had a ton of off and on power and you had a huge NP. And from that NP, you're like, well, maybe if I take the NP and then I subtract that because it was, you know, eight minutes long and I subtract 10% from that, then maybe I can figure mm -hmm. it out. But it's a lot tougher. Uh, you can't do that because if you do that, you just set yourself up for really tough training because that's the goal with this, right? Is it's not to, to boost your ego. It's not to define your worth or ability necessarily as a cyclist. Instead, what it is is to give you a good training benchmark. And from there, you can train even more. If you heard that chime just now, you may have. Uh, Amber is with us. So she's still working on getting her audio enabled and everything else. Um, so I think we're good. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes. can. The right. Amber, uh, uh, you're here just in time. Uh, we talked about a lot of secrets about Cape Epic, so don't go back and listen. <laughs> don't worry about it. I <laughs> so why is, why is Chad and Pete more, uh, <laughs> why are they more uh, a worry than Sophia and I? And I know it's not Sophia. <laughs> Please tell me, Amber. I, I'm a big boy. I can take it. Oh, that was a question. I thought you just answered your own question. Oh, oh snap. There, this is it. This is what see, I'm talking about. This is the track. It's spicy. Amber. <laughs> okay, we can move on. I'm just gonna go cry. <laughs> Uh, Amber, it's all love, you guys. It's all love. <laughs> Amber, you're jumping in uh, just as we're Hurts. wrapping up the, the ramp test question about why oh, cool. we use that instead of using any sort of a, of a ramp. And and you actually put down a note here on like the, the fact that and I, I just mentioned that you can't just like cherry pick from the best, you know, race that you had and you pick that power and then you try to use that for your training benchmark. Uh, but then on top of that, consistency is also important, right? Like that, that's right. A, that's exactly. A key thing. Yeah. Just the consistency of the protocol makes it a fair comparison. So the conditions under which you're testing, the more similar those can be from test to test, the better of a benchmark that is right. Because if then you're comparing apples to apples, essentially. So I think it helps to have that really consistent protocol because the, the conditions in which you get a peak one minute power are going to vary a lot for each of those peak powers that you set. Whereas a ramp test is going to be a very consistent protocol and we like science around here. So <laughs> <laughs> for sure, if you're not, and if you change even from, cause we still have the 20 minute test and the eight minute test enabled in trainer road, if you're using those and then you go to the ramp test, just like Amber said right there, consistency in the protocol is also important. Uh, so mm -hmm. you get, you get good at testing. And when I say get good at testing, you don't, you don't like uh, enable yourself to overreach. That's like one of the great things about the ramp test in particular is that, that that's not the case, but you just get better at pacing the effort and familiarizing yourself with it. So you're probably going to get better as time goes on. So if you switch to a new protocol, don't expect it to just be the same, or if it's a different number, just know that different tests. So can I, I got two live chat things about this that I want to mention sure. first, um, Chuck B says, if you have a lot of experience, 20 minute FTP test, is there any disadvantage to using it versus the ramp test? What we've seen, the problem with those sustained um, maximum output for a long time is that you have to pace correctly in order for it to be a, a good representation. And we see a lot of people do improper pacing and then you either, it's always gonna be a lower result than it would have been. And so what you pretty much have to do is know what your FTP will be before you finish the test, reduce that by the amount and hold it, which for most people, you don't know what that is. And in maybe some people you can like really dial it in with feel over 20 minutes and you can do that. And I know there are people that can do that, but for the majority of athletes in the world, I say that is more of a challenge than the, for people than the norm. Mm -hmm. And Julio says, my coach says there is no research to prove that ramp tests are accurate. He says that the 20 minute FTP has scientific proof. What do you think? Um, I wouldn't call it scientific proof, but I would say that, um, for the 20 minute test, as far as I know, I know that it's more of a, um, a Hunter Allen thing of like, this works pretty well for training and Hunter experienced that with his athletes. Um, and then we, in our data, I think and two, seriously, we have more data than anyone in the world on this. I don't know any, any, any app or anyone who has this many like training methodology period. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Any coach, right. A coach is like, Hey, I, I, I coach 50 people over my lifetime. Right. And we're doing tens of thousands a day of people doing rides and stuff. So, um, 
on this one we did is we we looked at like i said there's now tens and tens of thousands of people who have done the ramp test and we can see then afterwards they can do intervals that correspond to uh what we think they should be able to do with the correct ftp uh and no we didn't take blood lactate on all of them but does that really matter i think what matters is what performance you can do after the fact because that's what we want to do is watts over time at a certain you know at a certain intensity and then can we increase that so that's how we went about doing it um one, not to one, bag on coaches but if if you're a coach and you don't bag on trainer road it's hard to i don't know there's there's good things coaches like lee mccormick that's one coach sure. but if you just assign workouts you, you got to really offer something better than we do for the price for sure so, so sorry one, some one, people might do that but one thing with this too is <laughs> yeah, it's gonna catch on fire uh, one, <laughs> one thing one thing that we should make or point out with this is the fact that one of the things that like the core things that we try to that we focus on here is constant improvement in all that we do and the ramp test we so we look at that and if if the data was saying basically to that point that there's no scientific backing and it's really bad then we would be changing things we would be improving things uh, with that so uh, we're constantly looking at that and constantly making those sort of adjustments. So you can rest easy with that sort of, uh, with that sort of, I guess, point on that. And uh, that's a good point is John, our, our idea of constant improvement, we are not the best and we're actually actively making, and I'm just talking like 30 seconds before this started, we're tweaking things, especially in training plans. We have improvements to the whole way that we think people are going to train and uh, be the, what should happen in two years, you look back at this episode and people are listening to it right now and it's 2022 in July and it's, there's going to be at least one person. And <laughs> what we have done, you should look back at now and be like, I can't believe we used to train that way. And then the mm -hmm. next two years, right? It should always be an evolution. Just like your iPhone, you look back at it 10 years ago and you're like, I can't believe I use this thing. Mm -hmm. it, we're never going to be reaching perfection and we're always going to strive for perfection, uh, if that makes sense. So I just want to say that, that yes, we can improve and yes, we are always trying to improve. Um, there's also lots of people all the time who are like, this is the best way. This is the best way. And they don't really have, in my opinion, data to back that up. Um, they have like experience with a few athletes and we do look at all those things. And, um, we're constantly trying to like, we're not, we don't pick a method and then die on the sword by that method, because if there's something better, it goes into our ethos of we want to be better. So let's just change it and get better um, rather than saying like, oh, that's going to make us look bad. So we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I hope uh, I don't want yeah. to address each one individually because it just starts a war. But I want to make it we want results pretty much. That's what we, we care for results. Yeah. And based on evidence and we're willing, you know, we're constantly examining the evidence and we are constantly evolving as the evidence evolves as well. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff, too, we need more evidence. And that's some of the stuff that Amber's working on, right? Like the more data we have, the, the more, um, the better decision we can make in training. It's mm -hmm. a little, little teaser. Get ready You're to all going to love what Amber's going to put out. Loose lips sink ships. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel. Maybe even give this video a like with a thumbs up and a comment down below. If you want to see race analysis videos, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to get your coaching questions answered, you can click on it right over here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, which you should, you should go over to trainerroad.com. It'll make you faster. We promise. We guarantee it, right, Nate? Guaranteed. <laughs> or your money back. Yes, it's true, actually. We, we really will do that. Yeah.